What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and I'm going to show you how to solder with this butane soldering iron. Just like a regular soldering iron, but it um, uses butane. So if you solder, you have to be careful um, not to have it near anything, you know, loose clothing or anything that can ignite. Uh, so right here, that's where the butane flame is, right around here. So you got to be careful of that area. So when you're soldering, you're going to have to hold the soldering iron more upright than normal. If you're used to soldering very uh, horizontally, then you may scorch the board. So be careful of that. This one is made by Isotip. I'll leave a link in the video description below if you're interested. And so first thing you do is charge it. So this is about like maybe five bucks. It lasts actually uh, maybe like around 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. And when you charge it or fill, fill it up, you want to um, hold it upside down like that. And then you want to put the um, butane and you press down on the butane. It's pretty easy. So you just go ahead, just like that. And then you hold this steady and then push down on the, the can. And just about like um, five seconds is enough. You'll see it start spitting out from the top. That's when you know, you know, to release. Yeah. See, it starts spitting out like that. It's portable and it does a great job. This is equivalent to maybe like a, maybe, I don't know, 60 to 70 watt soldering iron. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This one's really easy to turn on. You don't have to use a lighter or anything or a flint. You just slide this, this on off right now. You just slide it over to the middle setting, which is equivalent to maybe like a 30 watt soldering iron. And when you press up on this, it's got a spark. And that's it, one click and it's heating up. And within 10 seconds, it should be ready to go. So let's find out. All right. That's pretty fast. It heats up really quick. And this is a little stand. I highly suggest turning it off and letting it cool down before you do that. It comes with a cap. So, it, you know, when you do have it turned off like that, uh, let it cool down for maybe like a minute before you put this cap on. And then it comes with this uh, case just like that and it has a sponge to clean the tip and it has different tips it has a blowtorch right here it has a hot knife which uh, cauterizes right here the chisel tip and it comes with some solder and it just goes on right here I'm going to show you how to solder let's we'll move it to the middle setting click that on let's see if we go Hit that up. So you want to do is you want to heat it up, just like that. You want to hold the um, soldering iron vertically so it doesn't scorch the board. If you, I'm gonna show you. If you hold it down like this, it'll actually scorch the board. See, it's scorching the board. You don't want that. It's not gonna harm it. That, that is, there's no trace right there. So, uh, but there is vent holes. See that vent hole right there? So whenever um, you see a vent hole, you want to face that upward so it doesn't uh, scorch the board. And see, that's kind of like a heat shield that, you know, the other side. There. So there's no vent holes on that side, and there's a vent hole on that side. You want to aim that upward. Get in there. And after you heat it up, there we go. Let that soak in. That's good. Do the same thing right here. On one side, you want to press against that solder joint, that, that pin, and let it heat up really good. Give it a chance. I usually leave it on the middle setting. It works just fine. You just got to give it some time. And that lasts me about uh, definitely over 30 minutes of usage. Now, if you're going to take out the solder, you want to heat it up, do the same thing. And I got my solder sucker right here. So what I do is on my solder sucker, I push down. It's a suction, basically, vacuum. Push down, press the button, sucks out the solder. 
All right. So let it heat up until it liquefies. Put it over your pin and then suck out the solder. Did a fairly good job because it heated up really well. All right, so if you're gonna solder wire together, what you wanna do is you wanna get a wire stripper, strip out the tip no wider than, no longer than your width of your uh, thumbnail or your fingernail. There should be plenty. And then twist it. And then do the same thing for the other side. And let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And then twist that. Now, if you want to protect the solder joint, you want to put the heat shrink tube right here is I go ahead and get some flux. It's going to help bond the solder to the wire. And you just dip it in here, just the tip. You could do the same thing for the other side of the wire. Just dip it in. And that's going to really help clean the surface so the uh, solder can bond to the wire. And just, you want to create an X like this. And then go ahead and twist the wires together. Just like that. See? And then let's go ahead and turn on the soldering iron. Now, you want to use solder with lead in it. The reason why you should use lead solder versus lead free solder is because you get a better solder connection as you can see here uh, lead free solder causes cracks uh, lead solder lasts longer so the lead is fine as long as you don't inhale it the fumes from the solder you want to wash your hands afterwards you want to leave that vent see that vent right there you want to make sure that it's facing upward and heat that up and then when the wire is heated up, then apply the solder and go back and forth. And let's go ahead and bring this heat shrink tube right here. And then you could take that vent right here, it's blowing out all the hot air. And then you can use that to shrink that tube. See how I did that? So it acts, it really helps. Now if you're gonna clean the tip, go ahead and clean it right here with a wet sponge. You could grab some flux, you dip your tip right here. So this is how you tin and prepare the tip, right? And you can retin it, just tap it like that, and then you're ready to solder. Now, if you want to remove solder from a soldering joint like this one, I'm going to show you how to do that. And again, remember to aim this upward. And you can use a desoldering braid right here, and you can just heat it up, and it should remove it. If it doesn't work, what you could do is take some flux and you can dip it in right here and then go ahead and try again and it should work now if the solder is not if you're not able to remove the solder what you can do is you could try another method so a lot of um, techs what they do is they uh, take some fresh solder and they actually put it on the soldering joint. See right here? And you add a little bit of solder. Get some fresh solder on there. And that actually, believe it or not, helps remove the solder because there's flux in there. See, now I'm able to remove it. So that old solder is hard to take off. It really helps. See how I did that? So now I can remove that part real easily. 
Now every 10 solder joints, you want to clean the tip. And you'll make the solder iron last a lot longer that way. And the whole entire time, I had it on middle setting. If you have it really high, you're going to waste your butane. And then the, um, right here, it starts to melt like the, um, the plastic right here. So you don't want to leave it on high setting. So if you guys are interested in this isotip butane soldering iron, in my opinion, it's one of the better butane soldering irons, if not the best one I've ever used. Uh, check out the link in the video description below if you're interested and click on the share button and share this video to anyone that's interested in soldering and click on the subscribe button if you want to subscribe to Tampa Tech for more how-to videos like this one and give me a big thumbs up if this video was informative.